my friends. Welcome back to Jesus Calling for August 9th. Wear my robe of righteousness. Oh, now you know why I have my bathrobe on. <laughs> Thought it'd be a good visual. Let's look at the verses. Isaiah 61.10 and 2 Corinthians 5.21. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom adores his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels, for as the soil makes the sprout come up and the garden causes the seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Second Corinthians 5.21 God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. That's a great verse. Wear my robe of righteousness with ease. I custom made it for you to cover you from head to toe. The price I paid for this covering was astronomical, my own blood. I'm going to read that again. The price I paid for this covering was astronomical, my own blood. You could never purchase such a royal garment, no matter how hard you worked. Sometimes you forget that my righteousness is a gift, and you feel ill at ease in your regal robe. I weep when I see you squirming under the velvety fabric, as if it were made of scratchy sackcloth. I want you to trust me enough to realize your privileged position in my kingdom. Relax in the luxurious folds of your magnificent robe. Keep your eyes on me as you practice walking in this garment of salvation. When your behavior is unfitting for one in my kingdom, do not try to throw off your royal robe. Instead, throw off the unrighteous behavior. Oh, I'm reading that again for me. When your behavior is unfitting for one in my kingdom, don't throw off your royal robe. Instead, throw off the unrighteous behavior. I love that. Then you will be able to feel at ease in this glorious garment, enjoying the gift I fashioned for you before the foundation of the world. Then you will be able to feel at ease in this glorious garment, enjoying the gift I fashioned for you before the foundation of the world. Oh, that is so good. I love the fact that he gives us a garment, that we get to wear it, and we should feel like royalty when we wear it. I mean, this isn't, you know, that great of a robe, but it's purple. I feel a little royal when I wear it. But dear friends, remember that we are royalty because we are part of God's kingdom. We're part of his family. And I love that when we're acting in a way that isn't good, we want to take off the robe because we think, well, we don't you know, we no longer belong to God, but he says, take off the bad habits instead and just keep the robe on. So I hope you enjoy wearing your robe today and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day. Welcome to Jesus Calling for August 10th. The verses are Ephesians 5, 15 to 16 and Psalm 119, 105. Let's look up Ephesians 5, 15. Be very careful then how you live not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Isn't that true, my friends? The days are so evil. And Psalm 119, 105, I know that one. You do too. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Isn't that so assuring? I love that verse. Relax in my healing, holy presence. Allow me to transform you through this time alone with me. As your thoughts center more and more on me, trust displaces fear and worry. Your mind is somewhat like a seesaw. As your trust in me goes up, fear and worry will automatically go down. I made a little visual for you. I love this. Got my little seesaw here. I got trust and fear. And as you can see, when our fear goes up, our trust in God goes down. But guess what? When our trust in God goes up, then our fear and our worries are going to go down. So... You always want to be like this, ladies. Never like this. Make sure you're always like this with trust high. Not like that, but like this. Our fear is low and our trust is high in God. Time spent with me not only increases your trust, but it also helps you to discern what is important and what is not. Energy and time are precious, limited entities. Therefore, you need to use them wisely, focusing on what is truly important. As you walk close to me, saturating your mind with scripture, I will show you how to spend your time and energy. My word is a lamp to your feet. My presence is a light for your path. 
Oh, dear friends, remember this today. The world wants us to be all full of uh, fear and worry like that. But we're going to tip it this way, aren't we? We're going to tip the scales. Our trust God is in you is so high. And we want to keep it high and keep our fear and worries low. So, friends, I hope you go through your day trying to keep it balanced and a little bit higher on the trust side. And I hope you have a great day knowing that He cares for you. See you tomorrow. Hello, welcome back to Jesus Calling for August 11th. Come to me. The verses are Revelation 22, 17 and Ephesians 3, 16 and 17. Let's look at those. Revelation 22, 17. Well, let's back up a little bit. We are talking about the last chapter of Revelation, which is the last chapter of the entire Bible. Pretty exciting. River of Life is the title. Jesus is Coming is another title. And then we're going to come up to on, um, I'm going to back up to 16 for you. Bonus verse. <laughs> I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come and let us hear who says, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come. And whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of the water of life. Oh, that's a great verse. Free gift of the water of life. Okay, let's jump to Ephesians. That's going to be New Testament. So let's go back a little bit here. All right, we are in Ephesians 3. This is a short letter that Paul wrote to the um, church in the city of Ephesus. And his letter is the book of Ephesians. And we're going to read um, starting with 3.16. I pray, this is Paul talking, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. I'll keep going on 19. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Oh, my friend, do you know his love? Do you know how wide and long and high and deep is his love for you? Do you know that today, my friend? I hope you do. And I got some other really fun stuff um, written right here. Let's look at this. I have... His love has no limits. And then beyond my knowledge in verse 19, when it says, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that means it is like beyond my knowledge, blowing my mind, how great his love is. And then I have something written up here at the top. This is back in 94. This is why it's good to write things in your Bible. Then you can just like go back and see them. But I have the power of Christ in me is greater than the pressure of troubles around me. Must have been have some trouble in 94. So um, it's nice to know that the power of Christ in me is greater than all the world's pressure around me. So don't ever forget that little nugget. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. This is my continual invitation proclaimed in holy whispers. When your heart and mind are quiet, you can hear me inviting you to draw near. Coming close to me requires no great effort on your part. It is more like ceasing to resist the magnetic pull of my love. That is good. We're rewinding and reading that again. Coming close to me requires no effort on your part. It's more like ceasing to the resisting of the magnetic pull of my love. So, sweet friend, he is just pulling you, pulling you, pulling you. So all you have to do is like in the, t like in the, um, the lazy river, you know, at, at a water park where you just pick up your feet and float along. Just pick up your feet. Stop digging your heels in. He's calling you. He's pulling you. Just let him pull you in. I love that. I'm going to stop resisting the magnetic pull. Open yourself to my loving presence so that I may fill you with my fullness. I want you to experience how wide and long and high and deep is my love for you so that you can know my love that surpasses all knowledge. This vast ocean of love cannot be measured or explained, but it can be experienced for sure. Definitely can be experienced, not explained 
Who's going to waste time explaining it? Let's just experience it. Just let him draw you in today. Stop resisting his pull. Just let him pull you in close and just have a wonderful day in his presence. We'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to Jesus Calling for August 12th. Come to me when you are weak and weary. Let's look at the verses. Isaiah 42, 3 and Romans 8, 26. Okay, Isaiah 42, 3. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. I love that because sometimes don't you just feel like you're just a smoldering wick? Like you don't have much in you. You're just kind of oozing a little bit of smoke or something. But he is not going to put you out. Okay, and then we have Romans, which is written by Paul. Um, chapter 8, verse 26. I love this verse. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. I love that too, because on times when we are just so weak or we don't, we're confused and don't even know what to pray for, the Spirit can pray for us on our behalf. And he understands, even just groans. So that's so comforting. Come to me when you are weak and weary. Rest snugly in my everlasting arms. I do not despise your weakness, my child. Actually, it draws me closer to you because weakness stirs up my compassion, my yearning to help. That's an interesting thought, isn't it? Accept yourself in your weariness, knowing that I understand how difficult your journey has been. Do not compare yourself with others who seem to skip along their life paths with ease. Their journeys have been different from yours, and I have gifted them with abundant energy. I have gifted you with fragility, providing opportunities for your spirit to blossom in my presence. Accept this gift as a sacred treasure, delicate yet glowing with brilliant light. Rather than struggling to disguise or deny your weakness, Allow me to bless you richly through it. Wow, I have like this whole page is highlighted, but I'll read that last part one more time. Rather than struggling to disguise or deny your weakness, allow me to bless you richly through it. Wow, so much in here. Um, you know, it's interesting that when we're weak, it stirs up his compassion. I really like that thought. And I love the part too about, you know, not comparing yourself with others. And it's so easy to do, isn't it? You think, well, so-and-so has life easy and why am I going through this struggle? But everyone has different times in life when things are great and when things are hard and you never know what someone's path is. So we can never compare, right? And it's not good to compare anyway. God has my life and I'm going to focus on that and just keep on going through. But I do love this other part. Accept it as a sacred treasure. You know, you ever think about your fragility as being sacred treasure? Not really. But rather than struggling to disguise or deny your weakness, allow me to bless you richly through it. So don't compare yourself to other people. And when you have bad times, realize maybe God's trying to teach you something in that. And just really sit and be open to it. Instead of complaining about the whole situation, just let him work through you. And let him snuggle up with you too. I love the image of snuggling with God. That's pretty cool. You have a blessed day. And we'll see you tomorrow. Welcome to Jesus Calling for August 13th. Learn to enjoy life more. Relax, remembering that I am God with you. I like that. The verses are Matthew 1 and John 10 10. Let's look those up. There's Mandy. She's ready for today. Let's look up Matthew 1 23. We'll start with the birth of Jesus Christ in verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph before they came together. She found out that she was with child through the Holy Spirit. And then it goes on in verse 23. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. I love that. And that comes from Isaiah 9, verse 6. So it's a prophecy that they pulled from the Old Testament. Isn't that awesome? Okay, John 10, 10. Let's back up a little bit to verse 7. Um, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. 
Verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that they may have life and may have it to the full. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Isn't that awesome to know that he is our good shepherd? And he did. He came and laid down his life for us. Learn to enjoy life more. Relax, remembering that I am God with you. I crafted you with enormous capacity to know me and enjoy my presence. When my people wear sour faces and walk through their lives with resigned rigidity, I am displeased. When you walk through a day with childlike delight, savoring every blessing, you proclaim your trust in me, your ever-present shepherd. The more you focus on my presence with you, the more fully you can enjoy life. Glorify me through your pleasure in me. Thus you proclaim my presence to the watching world. That was just really great. I like this line again. When you walk through a day with childlike delight, savoring every blessing, you proclaim your trust in me, your ever-present shepherd. You know, and that is true. He is always with us. Things aren't always going to go the way we hope or the way we like, but just knowing that he is our good shepherd. And on those hard days, what does a shepherd do? He picks up that sheep, puts the sheep over his neck and just carries the sheep along. A lot of days I know I need carrying and sometimes we can help, you know, carry each other too. So it's just good to know that he's always with us and he's never going to leave us. He's not a hired hand shepherd. He's going to stick with us in the hard times. So have that confidence today and just go out in his presence and you have a fantabulous day. You can order your own Jesus Calling devotional book by going to JesusCalling.com. And I would love to answer any questions you may have about faith in Jesus. Just email me through my website, nancyjoytoyou.com. And I hope you go out and shine for Him today. See you tomorrow.